Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you happen to be new here, my name is Marta. Marta. People used to call me Martha Washington in school. Martha. So I DIY a lot of my things. I shop at thrift stores, Goodwill. I do a lot of those upcycles. I shop at Dollar Tree and use a lot of Dollar Tree products. My goal is to inspire you. Inspire you to try something new. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can, and if you make mistakes, it's okay. As long as you're happy with your craft, that's all that matters. So if that kind of stuff interests you, then stick around for more. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So the people over at burlapfabric.com were gracious enough to send me a ton of material. They sent me over this beautiful clipper muslin fabric in the natural color and also a ton of burlap. Make sure to check them out. They have some really high quality stuff and great prices. Thank you so much burlapfabric.com. Let's get into the video. So lately, my job has become quite the gold mine. This basket was over by the volunteer section in the library, and they were going to throw it out. Are you kidding me? I saw the beauty in this and what could be, so I brought this baby home to give it new life. And all I did was give it one coat of my favorite Rust-Oleum chalk paint in white linen. Then grabbing an 8x10 sheet of regular printing paper, I cut out a piece of that muslin material and using some regular old scotch tape. Do they still call it that, scotch tape? Because, you know, <laughs> not up with the times. They may call it something else. But using regular scotch tape, I tape it down to the paper, all four sides. Now, I know that a lot of my subscribers don't have a Cricut, and I love mine, but I wanted to try this method out to see if it really worked and to give you another option. Went online, looked for a free image that I liked. I'm going to attempt to print it out onto the material without jamming up my printer. Now I'm using my HP inkjet printer for this. I don't know if it's gonna work with any other type of printer. I happen to love this one. It worked and I love this method. Also, this material is nice and thin. If you use something thicker, I don't know that it would work so well. So after cutting it to size, I just hot glue it to my basket. I frayed the edges just a bit to make it look a little more worn. Now to dress this up a little bit, I took some ribbon. I bought this ribbon on Amazon. It was actually about, I don't know, $5 or so. I haven't been able to find gingham ribbon anywhere. And what I do is just wrap it around the basket, make a quick little bow, and snip the ends. You could thread it through the basket, but I didn't think it was necessary. And here it is, my upcycled basket that they were going to throw out. I bet you if they saw it now, they'd want it back. No such luck, guys. Sorry. I love this basket. I love the neutrality of it. And I just filled it with some Dollar Tree pumpkins. I think this is going to be great all year round. Just by changing the ribbon, I can create a new look. So in my last haul, I told you guys that I bought a faux fireplace mantle surround. I got this at Wayfair for about $225. It came unfinished and I knew that I could paint this myself. It's actually less money if you buy it unfinished. And I absolutely love it. The quality of this is fantastic for the price. I just gave it a coat of paint. I am very, very happy with it. I will leave a link no, I am not sponsored by Wayfair in any way, but I just loved it so much. I wanted to share this with you. I've always wanted a mantle that I could decorate for all the seasons. I guess you're back. Are you tell me now for my next DIY, I'm going to take this pillow that I got when I bought my couches. I didn't care for the cover much. I'm going to attempt to make my own cover and I saw a pillow at Hobby Lobby that I really loved, but I figured I could make it myself, especially with this beautiful fabric that they sent me. So I cut a piece of the material down to size, and then I take my Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks. I love this glue. 
I use it for 95% of my projects, especially for these no sew pillows. I think it's the best choice if you're going to use glue to use this Gorilla Hot Glue. So I just use a bead of this hot glue all along the edges, both edges, because the top of the pillow, remember, is folded over, so you don't need any hot glue on that. Just take your time, making sure that there is hot glue all along the edge. This way, you don't have any open gaps. So then I take a piece of the burlap material and one of these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and all I want to do is just basically trace out the pumpkin on the burlap. This pumpkin is the larger one. I'm going to be using two to get the shapes that I need, but this one is going to go first and I wanted this one in the burlap. I traced it with some chalk. I didn't use a marker or anything because I didn't want to stain the burlap. And then I just cut out my shape. Taking this old piece of scarf that I had laying around, I made pumpkins last year with it. I'm going to take the smaller Dollar Tree pumpkin and I'm going to also trace out the pumpkin shape minus the stem. I don't want to trace out the stem. I put tape around the scarf only because it's, you know, softer than the burlap and I didn't want it moving around. So using a Sharpie marker, I go ahead and trace my shape all the way around. I'm gonna be turning this material around. You're not gonna be able to see that marker, at least I hope not. <laughs> and then I just cut the pumpkin shape out. Now using some more hot glue, I attach this piece of the scarf that I cut out onto my burlap pumpkin shape. Now I turn the material right side out and I'm going to glue both pumpkins onto what will be the face of my pillow. Before gluing this onto your pillowcase, I highly suggest you put a piece of cardboard inside so that the back and the front piece of the material don't stick to one another. I was actually very lucky, but it could happen. Now after that's dry, I go ahead and stuff my pillow back into my, or not back into, but into my new case. Now you know Marta, Marta makes mistakes and it's okay. I cut this fabric a little too short. So yeah, I was like bummed out and I said, oh my God, what am I gonna do now? Instead of just starting over and getting a new piece of material, I thought I would take these hoop and loop fasteners from the Dollar Tree and try and correct this error. Originally, I was going to just glue the bottom part of the pillow like I did the sides. That didn't work out, so you have to think of another plan. And mine was these hoop and loop fasteners. They're amazing, no glue needed. All you have to do is pull the paper backing off and stick it down onto your material. Now, I also should have folded the material over before I did this, but I did not. And the edges are frayed. No big deal, nobody's really gonna see that. And um, you know, some people may say, hey, that pillow doesn't look finished. But here's the thing, sometimes when you're crafting, you make mistakes and you don't want to, you know, use more material. I know I didn't want to waste this beautiful material. So this was the best way that I knew how to fix this. I take the corners of the pillow and I do glue them. This was originally the way that I wanted to make the bottom of the pillow anyway. Didn't work out that way. It's not perfect and again, it's okay. So now using the same method I used for my first DIY, I printed out the word grateful onto a piece of the material. Just make sure if you're doing this on your computer to bring down the word in your printing you know, program or whatever, because if not, it'll come out on the paper and not on the material. Using my fingers, I just fray the edges a bit 
and then I take a little piece of the scrap burlap that I had left over and I glue the word grateful onto my burlap. Now, a gazillion hauls ago, I picked up this bookmark. It's a wooden bookmark from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to incorporate it into this project just to embellish the pillow a little bit. I hot glue the burlap and the word to the bookmark just to hide the words that were etched out onto the bookmark. And then I take a tassel that I made with uh, Dollar Tree twine. I'm not going to show you in this video. My next video, I will show you how I make this tassel. I'm going to be making something else and I just cut down the tassel it was too long and then I'm going to glue it to the stem of the pumpkin taking some more of the Dollar Tree twine I make you know a little bow I don't know how to make bows very well but I make a little bow and I glue that to the edge of the twine that I originally glued just to hide you know where it starts and stops or whatever snip the ends and here is my pillow i am in love with this pillow no tooting of any horns but i think this pillow came out absolutely beautiful as you can tell the way that the pillow is placed you know whether it's on a couch or on a crate like i have it here you can't really see the bottom of the pillow so no worries <laughs> and I am super happy that I use the uh, hoop and loop fasteners, whatever you call those, because I can actually remove the cover and put it away. And I probably wouldn't wash this in the machine, obviously, but um, I could save it for next fall. I love how both of these projects came out. I think Max does too. And I hope that you enjoyed them. Please let me know which one was your favorite. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.